Beloved in Christ, know this, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's peace are yours this day. Well, it is a wonderful thing to be here with you, the people of Bethany, yet again, as we celebrate today the installation of Deacon Deborah Alba. I bring to you the heartfelt greetings of the people of the Rocky Mountain Synod, but in particular, the people of Cross of Hope Lutheran Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where Deborah was ordained just a little over a month ago, a place, a community which served as um, a locus of discernment and ongoing formation for you, Deborah. I know that the people of Cross of Hope celebrate this new chapter with you, even as they offer their celebration and prayers for you, people of Bethany even as they're still probably grieving a bit, saying goodbye to a cherished friend and colleague. Well, if the installation of a deacon, like you, Deborah, framed by readings for the season of Advent, if this combination points us to anything, I would say to you it points us to our call as God's people to be those who are living on the edge. Now, I know when I say living on the edge, it can create all kinds of images in our minds. You might picture living on the edge as being that person with an adventurous life, going to new and exotic places by unconventional means, trying new foods and learning different customs. Think like amazing race, sort of living on the edge. Living on the edge can also call to mind someone who is easily flirting with danger taking risks that most of us would reject as unsafe or unwise, perhaps even illegal or immoral. Think, uh, if you will, Breaking Bad, if any of you have seen that Living on the Edge series. Living on the Edge can also have a connotation of someone who is under a lot of stress, at their wit's end, operating under so much pressure that their behavior and their actions become unpredictable. Think of, you will, Batman's Joker character as living on the edge in that way. So what is exactly, what exactly does it mean to be living on the edge as the people of God? That's actually an excellent question to ask of a deacon, especially during Advent, because you see, living on the edge is what deacons do. And Advent is when we are reminded to join them in that edgy living. If you look carefully at the call of those serving in the ministry of word and service, you will see what I mean when I say deacons are called to living on the edge. Deacons are called specifically to live on the edge of the church and the world, to navigate that sweet spot where the church steps into the messy heartache of the world, even as the world begins to learn of the gifts that the church can bring to its challenges and concerns. The ministry of a deacon also involves guiding us to live on that edge of mainstream and margins, pointing us to those voices and experiences that are so often overlooked by our dominant culture, overshadowed by the normalizing perspectives of our society. Then there is that fine edge between God's woe and wonder that a deacon navigates, helping us to look at the power of a God who turns things upside down, not to disorient us, but for the sake of reorienting us to what matters most rerooting us in the fundamental justice to which God's love always gives birth. At the same time, a deacon is one who shepherds us to live on the edge of prayer and promise, where our laments become this fertile soil for our praise, where our mourning gives way to dancing even as we wrestle with the suffering and pain of life. In all things, the ministry of a deacon is a ministry of living on the edge, guiding us as the people of God to do the same. Which is why Advent is an ideal moment to focus on this diaconal call. Because in Advent, we hear these same themes about mainstreams and margins, God's wonder and woe, that space between prayer and promise. 
your Advent theme here at Bethany this year has to do with the unexpected ways of God. Deacon Deborah knows something about these unexpected ways of God in her own life and her own journey into this ministry of living on the edge on behalf of Christ's whole church. She noted to me, Others in our Ohio church community first spoke to me about their sense I was being called to ordain ministry. I personally could not wrap my head around it. Our girls were quite young, my husband Antonio was traveling extensively, and we did not live close to any family. And yet the call became increasingly clear. She adds, I've run across many detours, bumps, and quite honestly, bruises since the fall of 2007 when I first discerned this call. Absolutely nothing about my call story has been linear. God, however, has been faithful, and fortunately others have continued to encourage me on this journey. This validation from the community was often the extra push I needed when I couldn't envision God's greater plan. It has indeed been very unexpected. And yet here you are, Deacon Deborah, called now to live at these edges between the church and the world, between the mainstream and the margins, between God's woe and wonder, between our prayer and God's promise, all for the sake of continuing to bear witness to these unexpected ways that God is at work in us and in the world. Well, let's be honest about it. God has always worked unexpectedly. Take this prophecy from Micah about the future of this tiny hamlet called Bethlehem. Despite being the birthplace of King David long ago, no one in their right mind would ever have imagined God calling forth from Bethlehem of all places, one who would rule in Israel, who would be great to the ends of the earth, who would be the one of peace. Everyone knew that Bethlehem was noteworthy for absolutely nothing. People of power and importance, they came from Jerusalem where God's temple dwelt, where King David himself had ruled. And yet, here on the margins, in Bethlehem, the laments of the people for salvation would be met by God's own promise. Their woes would be turned to wonder, and the world would be completely upended by the birth of one who would become the most unexpected kind of Messiah possible, who would indeed be the Prince of Peace, who himself would live on all the edges for the sake of bringing about the reign of God, one who would fulfill God's completely unexpected ways of salvation by being crucified and raised from the dead. Here's the thing, friends. God's ways are always unexpected, and those unexpected ways are most evident at the edges where we as God's people are called to live. As any deacon will tell you, living on the edge for the sake of the unexpected things God is doing in this world requires a posture of attention and wakefulness. You cannot truly witness that for which you are not watching. Our lesson from Mark reinforces this truth. How many times in this one passage do we hear Jesus encourage us to keep awake, alert for what God is about to do? Now, Jesus is talking specifically here about the coming of the Son of Man, which we in the church understand as Jesus himself coming again in glory to judge both the living and the dead, as we say in our creeds. But in truth, the same posture of wakefulness is needed by us every single day at all the edges of life in order to witness how Jesus shows up here and now through the Spirit, to call us, his living body, to be the hands that engage in God's unexpected work in this world today. What gets in the way of our attentiveness is our inherent desire to remain comfortably in the middle, to block out all the noises and distraction at the edges, and to hope that God will simply act according to our needs and our expectations. Case in point, in this my 12th year as bishop of our synod, I would like nothing better 
in these next eight months than for things to be stable and drama-free so that I can focus on getting everything in good order, tying up any loose ends, so that I can hand off the ministry of bishop to the next person with a nice bow on the top. That's certainly what I want. Makes sense that God would want the same thing, right? It turns out that there is no moment in our life or ministry when we are not called to the edges for the sake of God's unexpected work in this world. We may desire to remain in the middle, but it is on the margins that God will be working in both wonder and woe, inviting our prayer and our praise, putting our gifts to use for the sake of being the living body of Christ for the life of the world. And so as I look to these next eight months, I will seek to channel my own inner deacon, <laughs> living on the edge, and trusting in the faithfulness of a God whose ways are always unexpected. To do that, I will need, like you, the gift of community, the blessing of being part of Christ's church, better together, as we say. None of us can do the work we are called to do as God's people alone no one can thrive living on the edge in isolation. Deacon Debras has noted this in her own call story. It is in our life with one another, as we are renewed in the waters of the font, as we are strengthened again at this table by none other than Christ himself. It is here in community that we are empowered for that edgy living and that watchful waiting. And friends, if you happen to have a deacon with you along the way to support and guide you, you can count that as a bonus and a true blessing. Today of all days, I trust that you do. Thanks be to God. Amen. together in singing our hymn of the day, Savior of the Nations Come. It's printed on page five in your bulletin. I invite you to stand. <laughs> 